Okay, here we are, guys. Jason from your couple of statue reviews here for the Collectiverse. Meeting with Jerry from Pop Culture Shop, and we're going to reveal something very big that Jerry's been working on. Tell us a little bit before it, Jerry, about it, Jerry, before we are uh, open it up. What are we going to have a look at today? Uh, this is the latest Mortal Kombat one third statue from Pop Culture Shop. Uh, we've done several. We've done Scorpion and Sub Zero, and we even did Goro last year. Uh, and this is by far the most uh, requested character for one third. Uh, and it's even bigger than Goro in terms of full mass. And that's saying something, because when we did Goro, people were, were saying, wow, yeah, that's it was huge. massive. <laughs> uh, and uh, so let's, let's unveil it, and then I'll talk some more about it. Let's have a look. And we will present to you the Shao Kahn one third statue. Wow. wow. Have a look at that, guys. Look at the beauty in that. Look at the level of work in the anatomy. The details are amazing. Uh, this, as in all uh, one third uh, statues to date, is hand sculpted in clay and wax. Yep. Not digital. Though I will say some parts we did do digitally, the armor. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to try to sculpt armor in clay when digital is yeah. superior format for that. Yeah. But as far as the anatomy and, and everything else, uh, it's, uh, it's all done uh, in clay and wax. Um, now how much time did this take you to do, Jerry? Uh, this was an interesting piece because uh, I actually did this mostly by myself. Yep. Um, I started towards the end of January, probably January 20th. Yep. Uh, and literally glued it together here yesterday. Wow. Hadn't, hadn't even seen it put together until yesterday afternoon. I think it's safe to here. say this, is, this would have to be up there with some of your finest work today. Thank you, I appreciate it. I do want to give some credit out to um, uh, Hive Studio Design did the concept art. Yep. Um, and uh, Justin McMillan did the 3D sculpting for the armor. And uh, Nathan Eakins and Steve Sergioli did uh, the painting. And Sam Salmon did the costume. Yep. Uh, so there, a lot, lot of lot of people uh, involved in those aspects. Now, uh, Mark told me something about this yesterday. That you had a, a little uh, personal touch that you added with the Dremel drill on the back, with the logo. Yeah, you want to come around? Yeah, and if see you that? come around and have a look at this. Now, keep in mind that this wasn't this was actually done with a Dremel drill so, by Jerry's own hand. So I thought, you know, Shao Kahn's throne is supposed to be carved in stone, right? It's not supposed to be uh, uh, perfectly symmetrical or anything like that. So I thought, you know what? If they were doing that, they would have carved the Mortal Kombat symbol into the back. They wouldn't have 3D printed it as a perfect symbol. So I took a Dremel and I actually carved it out of out of the, the plaster or that I, I used. It wasn't even clay. Um, this was the resin casting. It's got goosebumps. It was, <laughs> I took I took I took the resin casting and carved carved it out of the resin casting. Um, so it's actually not even in the mold. I mean, like the level of the detail, even in the back of this statue is amazing. Where you see a lot of manufacturers these days, they cheap out on the back because oh, it's not going to be seen. Right. You know, um, and that's what I was going to say about your work that I've noticed, Jerry. That the attention to detail, 360 around your pieces are appreciate absolutely that. amazing. So I appreciate that. I tried to. I like tried even, to find even the skulls, like some, absolutely some balance between the hammer and the, the skulls and. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I have to admit I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Of course, like with everything I've ever done, in six months I'm going to hate it. That's, that's just the way I am. Well, because then you're going to build something better, right. of course. Right, but, but, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Everybody came through. Uh, uh, I think it's great. Um, and what was your inspiration for this piece? Um, was it you know what? particular games or? Uh, well, it is, it is based on, uh, 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 is it Mortal Kombat 2, I guess, Shaq Khan is? Uh, yes. Is that the first yeah. one he's on the yeah, throne? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so, um, sorry, sometimes. Yeah, there's well, so many. There's so, there's so much, many of them. <laughs> um, was it like Mortal Kombat 12 <laughs> or something it's, now, it's, so yeah. It's based on Mortal Kombat 2. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in that game, of course, you know, the, the pretty low res sprites, uh, even though it was live actors being filmed. So there's a lot of interpretation as to what the throne really would have looked like. Um, and, uh, you know, Hive really helped uh, develop 
the concept from yep. pixels to here. Uh, so big shout out to them for that. And, and we don't have a, a set PO date as yet, uh, but um, Omar Emperor would be very keen to know when you're going to put it up, because I guarantee he'll be getting it day one. So right. shout out to you, Omar. Well, it looks a lot. He's jacked like Omar. He so. is jacked like Omar. <laughs> Omar loves to hit the weights a bit and pump himself up like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I, uh, I think he'll dig it. He'll dig it a lot. He Maybe will. we should do a variant pet for Omar. We probably. Just, oh, yeah. if you did one just for him, he'd love right. that. Yeah. <laughs> now some of these other pieces you've got here too, Jerry. Oh, I do um, want to say. Um, there will be some light up features on this that we're not ready for the show. Yep. But there are some, I don't want to give away, we figure at this so point. That's not the final loss, but you're still putting the finishing touches Yeah, too. I'd yeah. say it's 97%, yep. but you know, visually, but there will be some light up. And, and I might I might tweak a few little things. Uh, it is definitely one of those guys. Yeah. And um, <laughs> also, Mark was saying that this would look absolutely fantastic. We'd like to do a third scale Scorpion and Sub Zero on either side of him. Yeah, yeah. And Goro behind him. Goro is yeah. actually taller because Goro's standing up. And Goro's sitting down. And I mean, yeah. the muscle definition, I mean, like, that's what you're most famous for. You. Like your anatomy work, and that is second to none. So, I mean, I'm very, very impressed with this piece. Appreciate that. I try to, I try to have a style for anatomy. I mean, it's based in reality, but I try not to go too ripped. Like, yeah. everybody these days seems to sculpt ultra ripped, where you can see every oh, Yeah, some, especially some of the custom makers and, and that, yeah. And while I appreciate the technique and the skill involved, um, I feel sometimes it makes the piece look a little flat. So I like to save, uh, I like to have some, some less ripped areas and yeah. then save the rip for certain areas. Um, so he, he has a very similar feel to Sagat in that. Yeah, I love the staff too, really nice touch too. That is one thing I'm going to change. We're actually going to make the, the top of the staff bigger. Yep. It feels a little small. I want the ball to be as big as his head now that I've seen it all yep. put together. So we'll, we'll, we'll change that next week. So there you go guys, a couple of little changes that Jerry's hitting at that he's going to make. So yeah, we're, You know, we're always trying to make it better. Yep. You know, if you put something together and you see some things you can improve, just do it. And um, the other thing that I've seen here at your little booth that's really got me excited is your Judge Dredd that you have over here. I know you've already revealed it, but um, mate, best Judge Dredd yet that we've seen. Well, we appreciate it. By, by a country mile. Um, you. Uh, really, I mean, you can see from the level of artwork in it, if you come over and have a peek this, Adrian. I do want to... Uh, and the exclusive comes with the, the coat yes. from, the, from the comic as well, from the, um, the Judgment Day War. Yes. Yes. Uh, I do want to give credit to Justin McMillan, who basically headed this project up. He sculpted uh, Dread. Uh, I think 100% himself. I think he, all digital, and I'm pretty sure Justin did that one 100% himself. Uh, uh, with art direction uh, by myself, and uh, and uh, concept art was by Conceptopolis, yeah. which is an uh, art direction studio. Uh, so that's what you usually, um, you, you put out the concept art to be done by someone else and then work off the concept art for your sculpt. Yes. Yeah. Uh, having said that, we never stick to the concept art 100% because 2D to 3D, you always see things that you're like, well, let's change that up a little. Mm. Um, so it's always, it has to be an organic process. If it's too rigid, you just kind of lose the life of stuff. And uh, this raid and, you have, and the dragon, like absolutely amazing. This is uh, just being sculpted or being told. Uh, let's go, go over yeah, let's go over and we're going to go and have a look at uh, this, the dragon from Dungeons and Dragons that they're just bringing out. Dragons, you know, Dungeons and Dragons history. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think you're really going to open yourself up to a couple of new million customers with the uh, Dungeons and Dragons series. We're, we're hoping. So um, I've been a I've been a Dungeons and Dragons fan my whole life. I was playing when I was eight years old, um, and this was sort of a dream license for me. Uh, and. Uh, the negotiations on this license took forever. We thought we would have been able to show this uh, show pieces last one to come. Yeah. We we started negotiating this license in 2016, 
that's how long it took. Well, I was going to say, you don't actually no, see very many Dungeons and Dragons statues out that's there. That's why so. it took so long. Yeah. They yeah. actually told me, um, this is, I swear to God, this is true. They said, we don't, you know, we haven't done uh, official statues and collectibles and stuff um, because we don't really trust a lot of people's interpretations. But well, says a lot. They, they, trust said, you, Jerry, they yeah. said that they ran my proposal by the art department and, and, and the creative department said, we're familiar with their work. Um, okay, let's let's go forward with this one. So excellent. Um, thrilled, flattered, you know, I mean everything you can imagine. And uh, Mark was saying you, you may be considering doing the, the chain of heroes from the old animated series and stuff like that as well. Oh yeah. I mean so th this that's is, a trip down memory lane for me. I'll be definitely getting some of them off. This is intended to be a very big, broad line encompassing big creatures, smaller statues, the cartoon. I mean, you know, I mean, jumping into this is, is, is like a, a dream come true. I mean, like, even the detail, like in the castle, guys, and the scales of the dragon and everything you can see, it's absolutely amazing. Like, once this thing's painted, it's going to be, like, off the hook. Yeah, I, I do want to, uh, the sculptor on this is Gail, and I can't think of, I can't pronounce Gail's last name. It's, it's very long, so I apologize, Gail. Uh, he's a very talented sculptor. Uh, that's who sculpted this. I art directed it, and uh, uh, Conceptopolis again did the concept for this. Yeah. Sorry, and this is 3D printed. And this right? is this is a, yeah, it was yeah. done all digitally, and this is a 3D printed. I'll tell you, we spent months trying to figure out how big to make it because that's one of the things you get spoiled with 3D is you're like, I can make this any size I want. Yeah, because you can do it all in segments. Yeah. Right. So at first we were thinking even bigger, but. Then, uh, you know, Dungeons and Dragons people, uh, you know, fans of Dungeons and Dragons and, and fantasy things like this don't gener aren't generally used to super high price point items. Yeah. So we thought, well, let's let's try to make it to where it's, I hate to use the word affordable because it's still expensive or it will be, um, but let's make sure it's not, you know, $2,000 or something well, I was going to really actually say that with your pieces, Jerry, that as large as they are, they are affordable. Like in the larger scale, like when you look at like in the scale of like say Prime One and stuff like that, yeah. yours very much are affordable. PCS does does try its best yeah. to to keep the the price, you know. They're and you can't you from what Mark was saying, you're constantly taking more steps to try and bring the costs down for your, yes. for your collectors now. Well, particularly the shipping costs. Yes, and sometimes yeah, and sometimes the steps they add a little bit to the weight, which we apologize for. But you know, sometimes you have to give a little bit. Um, but uh, I, I don't think there's an no, there's no announced price on this yet. Yep. Uh, so I don't want to speak. Uh, yeah. I know what we've talked about, but I, I don't want to say anything yet. But it will probably be less than you think it will be. I will <laughs> say that. Fair enough. Um, but it, it really is. Gail did an amazing job. Everybody, and I can't wait to see it painted. Uh, hoping, Me either. We're hoping to have it painted for the show, but that that didn't work out because this is this is going to be like a two week paint. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, oh, minimum. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, if you haven't zoomed into the base, the, uh, as much as I love the dragon, I love the base just as much. Mm. Uh, it's a very well, that's what I was pointing out. Yeah, like the, uh, the, the level of work in the in the battlements and stuff like that is yeah. absolutely amazing. Even around the back where no one's going to look, there's like a little thing out there. It's interesting. Uh, one of the problems when I say about your artworks, Jerry, that from the back, you know, like the part that no one's going to see, you still put the same amount of work and effort into it, which is exemplary. Yeah. Uh, very, very thrilled about Dungeons and Dragons in general. I mean, it's very, very exciting. I have a question from the viewers. They're yeah. asking if Tiamat is going to be coming. Tiamat? Yeah. Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> Tiamat is the most famous dragon. Uh, but we didn't, we didn't want to start there. Uh, we kind of wanted to do a build, so yes, absolutely, for sure. I can't say when, but uh, for sure it will happen. Yeah. And we have some more Mortal Kombat pieces over here that you've uh, got on display. Sure. So, can you tell us about this lovely piece here? So we have uh, the Quan Chi from Mortal Kombat X, which is actually in stock uh, at the warehouse, and uh, you can order it and have it in a few days, I believe. Uh, I'm really proud of it. Uh, I think it came out really great. I'm going to embarrass myself by saying I don't remember who sculpted it. It's because it was sculpted like two years ago now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you deal with that many sculptors. Someone good. 
I will say that. I, mean, we'll um, I it. love the detail on the chest and skull. Yeah, yeah actually, um, yeah. if you, Adrian, <laughs> you want to come around and have a look at this, yeah, you can have a look at the, Yeah, no. Like the cod piece and the chest piece and that, like the level of detail in it, absolutely amazing. And the shout can. Oh, absolutely. Which, which just started shipping, I believe, from the warehouse. Um, uh, I sculpted that one. This one has a, a little bit of an interesting st uh, story in that uh, I had a, I hired someone else to sculpt it, someone new who had never sculpted in collectibles before. Now it's a talented person. Um, but it just didn't, it, it looked way too rough. It looked like a piece of fine art, like you want to make it into a bronze. Yep. It didn't look like a collectible. So we just put it on, we paid the person, and we put it on a shelf. And then I had like three weeks to get this done because we had a PO date we had to keep. Yep. Um, yeah, so uh, myself and then Justin McMillan on the armor, uh, we, we tag team this and just like, yeah, three weeks of really chaotic work to get this done. Um, and this Raiden, mate, that is absolutely amazing. And it's got the LED features as well in the uh, in the lightning and that as well. So, and so does Shao Kahn, he has LEDs in his eyes. Yeah, you can actually see them lit up there. Are they, yeah, they lit up there? It's hard to see in this light. Oh, also, you know what? I think they left the lights on all night and the batteries are dry. Oh, no. Well, actually, yeah, Mark was saying they were going to put the rain on the didn't want to the batteries run down or anything like that. Because Shao Kahn's eyes were way brighter yesterday. So, yeah, actually, when I saw him, it was pretty bright. I, I yeah. think that's uh, what happened. But uh, he's, avail all, he's available right now in the warehouse uh, if anybody digs him. And uh, what about Raiden? When, uh, now, is he available now? Or? Excuse me? This, uh, this Raiden is available for pre-order. Yep. I don't... I don't know when it's supposed to ship. I shouldn't guess at it then. Um, but uh, uh, this is, uh, I believe it was John Cleary and Justin McMillan both worked on this. Uh, concept by Concept uh, And honestly, you know what? I, had, I only had a little bit of hand in this as an art direction because I was in the middle of a personal move from yep. Los Angeles to Las Vegas. So I didn't have time. And they, they knocked it out of the park, right? They don't need me anymore. Um, these guys are, are I love the, um I love how the lightning is exploding out of the base and, and you shattering yeah. the back of the base. That took a long time for them to figure out because they had to add the rocks for stability um, or else oh, yeah. the thin lightning pieces would start to bend yeah so and you get heat and they start to warp so and yeah. the, the, the lightning was was revised like i think three or four times before they found the the right place for it but well, uh it's i love the right place now <laughs> i love this piece yeah. you know it, it goes with the uh, uh even though it's a classic rated it, it's in the style of the mortal kombat x scorpion and sub-zero that uh we did over the past two years uh with the very detailed uh, bases yeah because uh, a lot of our stuff has the black base the classic kind of museum base mm -hmm. but enough fans have been vocal that you know, they, they want us to also do detailed. Crazy yeah, well, I was going to say actually, that's what I've noticed. Um, some of your earlier pieces have just got the simplistic base, and it's right. more the work on the actual statue. Look at the art piece, right? In the base, but now you're really lifting the levels on the base yeah. as well. You know, so. I want to I want to give a shout out to my friend Brian over at XM, who inspired us to design this because of all the amazing stuff XM does with their bases. Yeah, they uh, do. Brian and I are really close, and uh, you know, we're always talking on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, about what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Um, so uh, this this was was kind of our little hey we're going to do something that XM would have done with Mortal Kombat. Oh, cool! Uh, and I think I think it came out really great. So that's great to hear. That, you know, when companies are collaborating like that as well. You know, cause we're, we're all collectors. Most of us are our friends. I mean, yeah. I'm super good friends with Paul over at Chronicle, uh, and of course I'm good friends with everybody at Sideshow. Yeah. I've known Tom at Sideshow since '89. Wow. Yeah. Um, one of the viewers was asking, will there be others like this rated? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, in fact, they're, there's, they're in progress. Uh, you will Is there anything see... you can talk about that you're uh, conceptually working on at the moment? or? Um, you know what? <sighs> or things no, you have nothing, nothing that I can actually be specific about. Um, but um, I will say that there's two more Mortal Kombat's in this line being worked on, uh, probably for debut at San Diego, is my guess. But Excellent. now that I'm, I'm more focused on the art department, I'm not 100% in the loop on release dates and PO dates and stuff like that. Thankfully, I don't want to be in the loop. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I just want to work on art. Um, 
but yeah, no, I mean, Mortal Kombat is, is it's alive and well. I mean, you know, it, it, uh, and there's a new game. And hey, you may see some stuff from the new game, right? I've got a personal question for you, Jerry. The work that you do um, you've, is exemplary. You've got a broad range of uh, characters and that, that you work with. What is the character you would love to do the most? Uh, that you yeah. haven't done yet? Uh, it, it's just, I've been trying to get the license since the late 90s, which is Gotcha Man. Uh, Battle of the Planets. Oh yes, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what it was, what it what it's called down under. Uh, I think it was still called Battle. Of the was it? Was yeah, it yeah. In, the, in the states? It was Battle of the Planets as well. But so, most of the world was Gotcha Man. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's my absolute. Uh, other than Micronauts, Gotcha Man is my absolute favorite thing in the world. Yep. Um, and I've never been able to get. They just have never given it to me. And ne I put it off. Never give in. up hope, Jerry. Every few As you years. saw, you got your Dungeons and Dragons ones out the yeah, way for a I while. Did, so. I, did, I didn't think that would happen, but that did. So hey, maybe one day got you, man. But, I, yeah, think, that is... I think when people see work like this that you're bringing out, I think uh, people might be coming knocking on your door saying, what license do you want? <laughs> Fingers crossed, let's hope. <laughs> but um, Jerry, look, thank you very much thank for your you. time today, buddy. Uh, thank you very much for the reveal. Thank you, everybody. And we look very much forward to all of your work you have coming up in the future. And our collectors also thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys.